Are you feeling frustrated because you've learned lots of needle felting techniques, but you're still not able to get your project to look the right shape? Or perhaps you believe some of the other myths around needle felting that are holding your needle felting skills back. Ooh, are you going to talk about the Loch Ness Monster? No, Rabbit, not that kind of myth. These are needle felting myths. Aww. So let's have a little quiz that I'm going to call Felting Fact or Felting Fiction. So today we have two contestants, Squishy and Owl, who are going to try to work out which of these statements are felting fact and which are felting fiction. The winner gets to find out what I'm making next and maybe some sweeties as well. So first off, as a beginner to needle felting, you may have thought to yourself, if I learn lots of needle felting techniques, I'll be able to needle felt anything from a cute owl to a realistic dog. What do you think, Squishy and Owl? Do you think that's fact or fiction? Hmm. Well, while learning lots of needle felting techniques is a good way to learn how to needle felt, it may not cover everything that you need to be able to do to get your needle felted items looking really good. Maybe you feel like giving up because each time your project doesn't turn out just how you want it to look. Please don't feel despondent or give up. I believe anyone can learn how to needle felt with a little practice. One saying I really like is practice makes progress, but also you could be struggling because of something that's not often dwelled upon in these sorts of videos, is the fact that you're actually attempting to sculpt with wool. Yes, you're becoming a sculptor. Ooh, stand beside Michelangelo. <laughs> but before you run to the hills thinking I'm not good at art, don't panic. It's sculpture with a small s. Whatever that means. Well, what I mean is you're not going to have to study the human form or spend hours making sketches of animals, but it might take a bit of practice to needle felt well-proportioned, realistic-looking animals, or even cartoon-style animals. So here's some quick tips on improving your wool sculpting skills. What I do each time I felt a project, I pick one thing to focus on that I'd like to get better at. So at first it might be making sure that the head is the right size in proportion to the body. If you have a photo or image that you're copying from, print it out the same size that you would want your finished item to be. And this might take a few goes to get it the right size. But then you can use the printout as a guide or use a strip of paper to measure the height and width of the head on the picture and check it matches your project. Or if you can't get the picture the same size as your project, then you could work out how many times the height of the head goes into the body and check your needle felted head goes into the body that same number of times. Please don't forget to click the like button if you're enjoying this content. By doing this, you'll help the needle felters find this video. You can use a strip of paper to measure lots of distances, like how far apart the eyes are, for example. With practice, you'll be able to see differently and shape the wool by using the right side of your brain. What are you on about now? Most people don't need to be taught how to see. I think she's gone a bit funny. Well, the right side of our brains are responsible for anything non-verbal. It's where your intuition comes from and is responsible for judging spaces and distances. But in the majority of our life, we use the left side of the brain when we're speaking or working problems out, being logical and symbolic. So if you were felting a dog from memory, your left brain would probably try to take over and make something like Brian the Beagle here. It's probably recognisable as a dog to most people. Most people? <laughs> Well, some people then. Anyway, leave poor Brian alone. He's got fans, you know. Ooh, has he? But it's okay to make something like this. As long as you had fun making your project, that's what really matters. But if you'd like to learn more about creating realistic looking shaped animals and practice this new way of seeing, there's a very good book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain by Betty Edwards. Hang on, I thought we were learning to be sculptors, not how to draw. Yes, we are. But you use the right side of the brain in the same way with sculpting wool as you do when drawing. Anyway, if you'd like to learn more about this, let me know in the comments and I could create a video giving exercises for you to practice this way of seeing and sculpting the wool. So getting back to the quiz, that's one point to owl so Ooh. far. Right, round two. Ooh, I know something about needle felting. To get the wool to felt, you need to stab the wool really hard and all the way through. Ah, it sounds like you've been watching the same YouTube video as I have. So Squishy and Owl, what do you think? Fact or fiction? Recently I was watching a video where a famous art YouTuber set a challenge to his teammates to needle felt anything and the best one won a lot of money. A lot of them have never needle felted before so one of the contestants tells the others that you have to stab the wool really deep. Make sure you're stabbing all the way through, not just on the top. Did everyone hear that? Yes. But I'm afraid Al, this isn't always the best advice. The barbs on your needle that catch the wool are only up to here and will vary depending on what type of needles you have. So there's no point stabbing too deep as the barbs can only work to that depth. So if your needle comes out the other side, it will push fibres out the back of your project 
and you'll only have to stab them back in. You need to stab firmly, but not too aggressively. I tend to stab as though I want the tip of the needle to stop just beyond the centre of a small item, and on a larger item, not much more than an inch deep. Be careful not to stab too hard, or you might hit the armature or a plastic eye, which is likely to break your needle, as they're quite brittle. So, Squishy wins the point that time. Oh, I can see this is going to be a close competition. Round three. I only eat plant-based food, so I don't want to use sheep's wool, which means I can't do needle felting. What do you think, guys? Do you think this is true? Well, you're both right. Well done. Because if you're vegetarian, vegan or allergic to wool, you can still enjoy this amazing craft. There's lots of needle felting suppliers that now stock a large range of plant-based fibres, made from everything from bamboo to banana. I'll list some suppliers below in the description for you. Round four. But needle felting is dangerous, and I might stab myself. So, guys, do you think that needle felting is dangerous? Oh, so both of you think it's dangerous. Well, that might be the trauma of being stabbed repeatedly talking there. Well, to be honest, you can stab your finger with the needle. You do tend to do this more when you're just starting out, or if you're not working on a mat and holding it mid-air, or when you try to needle felt a ridiculously tiny chair as I did here. <laughs> hey, it's not funny. It does sting a bit. Obviously, I get lots of sympathy from these guys. Well, you stabbed us lots of times. Well, I can't argue with that. If you do catch your finger, it doesn't hurt that much, though. And if you're careful and don't try to watch TV while you're felting, it won't happen often. You can also get these leather finger guards, which will offer some protection from being stabbed, which some people like to use. Personally, I find they make it more awkward to hold the wool and prefer to work without them. It's also still possible to stab yourself if you happen to stab down the seam. Ouch. Anyway, I wouldn't class needle felting as dangerous, so neither of you are getting a mark, especially after laughing at me. Sorry, Julie. Round five. Right, for the last one, the scores are very close, guys, so it's all down to who gets this one right. There's lots of ways you can attach arms or legs when needle felting. So what do you think, guys? It's a tricky one, as neither of you have arms or legs, so haven't experienced this. Okay, well, the winner is... <laughs> the owl! I believe that there are lots of ways to attach an arm or a leg. Some people prefer to shape the arm and then use a scarf of wool to attach it to the body. I prefer to leave one end unfelted and spread that unfelted wool out and stab it onto the body. And if you want, you can wrap a strip of wool around the joint to make it even more secure. So there isn't really one way of attaching them. I'd say don't be afraid to experiment and find what works for you. So here's your prize, Al. This is what I'm working on at the moment. What do you think it's going to be? Is it an alien? No, it's not an alien. It's going to be a cat. But I suppose it does look a bit weird at the moment. Hopefully once it's got its fur and ears on, it'll look a bit better. You might want to subscribe to see how it turns out. But first, you'll need to get the body proportions of the cat spot on. And in this video, I'll not just show you how to do this, but I'll give you a technique for making simple and easy armatures. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks, and see you next time. Where's them sweeties you promised? Okay, come on, let's go and find some sweeties for you.